Okay, uh, hi everyone, uh, and welcome to the official launch of the Australian Seed Bank Partnerships, Australian Virtual Seed Bank. Uh, David Merritt's my name. I'm the chair of the uh, National Steering Committee for the Australian Seed Bank Partnership. Uh, and I'd like to uh, start the event by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet. Pay my respects to their elders past and present. Uh, and I'd like to particularly uh, acknowledge the Wadja Noongar uh, people as the traditional owners of Kings Park from where I'm speaking to you today. So again, welcome to the launch. Uh, the order of proceedings for um, today is that firstly I'll provide uh, a brief slideshow to introduce the Australian Seed Bank Partnership and the Virtual Seed Bank. Uh, I'll then pass over to Jack Brinkman, who is from the Atlas of Living Australia, and uh, Jack will uh, dive a little deeper into the Seed Bank portal uh, and show us what it's all about. Uh, then we'll hear from uh, Dr. Rebecca Miller, who's here with us from Royal Botanic Gardens in Victoria, and uh, she's a uh, Seed Bank um, scientist, so she'll talk to us a little bit about uh, the portal and how she might use it. And then we'll close with any questions. So for those of you in the audience, uh, just note that if you do have questions, please just pop them in the um, Q&A section of the uh, Teams and we'll get to them uh, at the end. So, okay, without further ado, we'll get it underway. I'll just share my screen. Uh, okay, so welcome again to the Virtual Seed Bank uh, portal. We uh, hope that this portal is going to provide a user-friendly in entry point into Australia's uh, Seed Bank holdings for all of you that may interact with us here at the Australian Seed Bank Partnership. So, as we all know, Australia, we're a biodiverse country and our native plants unfortunately are under threat with uh, more than 25,000, 21 to 25,000, I think the latest number is, native plants in Australia. Uh, at least 10% are threatened uh, under federal legislation and we really have a myriad of threats to our biodiversity, changing climates, changing fire, habitat loss, uh, weeds, diseases, all of these things are causing our biodiversity loss uh, to be increasing. And this is where ex situ conservation is one of the ways in which uh, we can try to prevent species extinction. So ex situ conservation, of course, is the conservation of plant species and their genetic diversity off site away from the natural habitat. And it's in the form of germplasm, which is uh, usually seeds, but it can be other um, types of germplasm, tissue culture, even whole plants in the nursery. So ex situ conservation is a strategy uh, to increase insurance populations of plants and as I say, prevent species extinction and support their continued existence in the wild. So to introduce the Australian Seed Bank Partnership, for those of you who might not be familiar, uh, it's an alliance of uh, conservation seed banks and conservation organisations across Australia. So in each uh, state and territory in Australia, we have, have partners uh, and we have some uh, allied partners as well, um, non-government agencies, as you can see um, on this slide just here. So we are a not-for-profit uh, environmental charity uh, and uh, we also work with other plant networks and international agencies uh, and it's very much a collaborative and coordinated effort uh, to conserve Australia's plant species by seed banking. So what we do, we have a, uh, a strong track record. We've been uh, uh, exist for around 20 years in, in various forms and at least 10 years uh, under the current uh, structure. And we collaborate on seed banking, seed biology research, uh, knowledge sharing and supporting the use of collections in uh, rare species translocation and ecological restoration. So some of our key projects focus on safeguarding and securing and studying Australia's flora. You can see on the uh, slide here, uh, some of the key um, outcomes and activity areas that we've highlighted in our strategic plan. So this is our new strategic plan uh, for the next 10 years. You can find that on our, our website. And uh, as I say, a big part of our work is, is on sharing knowledge through initiatives that allow us to share information about plants. And that's really what the uh, Australia Virtual Seed Bank portal is all about. 
Uh, the Australian Seabank Partnership is governed through the Council of Heads of Australian Botanic Gardens. Uh, it's coordinated by a secretariat who uh, are hosted by the Australian National Botanic Gardens in Canberra. We have a National Steering Committee which uh, manages and drives the implementation of our strategic plan. Uh, and we're supported by expert working groups, which we set up from time to time to focus on uh, particular uh, areas or initiatives. So uh, the, the data working group, for example, that we set up supported the um, development of the Australian Virtual Seed Bank. And so together with all these groups really help us achieve um, our vision where Australia's native plant diversity is valued, understood and conserved for the benefit of all. So here's a snapshot of germplasm conservation across Australia. Uh, the work of the Australian Seed Bank Partnership complements uh, some of the global targets that aim to protect plants in their natural habitat. Uh, and you can see, for example, through our efforts that over two thirds of the federally listed threatened flora in Australia are now represented in seed banks. And that's really been achieved over the past 10 years of hard work by the partnership. So, Seed collections um, through our projects, again, they provide the in insurance against the extinction and make sure the genetic material is available for use in conservation and research. So um, you can see here we have uh, Danny from the Victorian uh, Seed Centre and Tom from the National Seed Bank in um, ANBG Canberra collecting uh, seed material from native plants. And of course, when the seed is collected, a large quantity of data is also collected with these seeds. Uh, the, the type and amount of data varies with collections uh, and obviously uh, data standards have evolved with time um, and, and certainly have changed uh, over the many decades that some of the Australian seed bank partners have been uh, working in seed banks. But the data typically includes things like the source location of the, uh, the parent plants, the collection date, habitat or neighbouring species, soil type, these, these kinds of things. Uh, and at the same time, herbarium specimens usually collected to verify uh, the species identification and then when the seed collections are brought back to the seed bank information about the seeds is collected and that can include the purity of the collections the weight and quantity of seeds have been collected uh, storage conditions also recorded with the seeds germination trials are also part of the work that we do uh, germination trials obviously provide data on the viability of the seed collections help to reveal the processes and how to uh, germinate plants from seed. And of course, it's critical that we're able to germinate seeds to be able to use them in our conservation and, and restoration activities. Uh, those of you who are familiar with working with seeds would well know that each species has their own specific cues for germination. And so uh, understanding those cues is a big part of the research and work that we do. And it's critical that seed scientists really uh, develop and document uh, the best way to germinate these species so that other end users can use the seeds for the purposes they might be liking to use them for. So during the process of germination testing, also a lot of data is collected. Uh, that can be the number of seeds tested, the number that germinated, and then treatments used to promote germination. That could be scarification, the temperature used, the viability of the seeds and the like. So as you might be imagining, uh, a lot of data is collected along with the seed collections uh, and that put, that data forms an important part of our uh, use of the seeds in, in our conservation activities. And the Australian Seed Bank Partnership, one of our goals is to uh, develop initiatives that can share the knowledge that we learn about the seeds um, and, and get that knowledge out there for other users. And so really this is where the Australian Virtual Seed Bank portal comes in and it's my pleasure to introduce you to the portal. So this has been developed in partnership with the Atlas of Living Australia and is a publicly available website and allows you to view and download the data on Australian Seed Bank Partnership seed collections to support your own research, ex situ conservation and in situ management uh, projects. So the, the portal contains data from uh, 10 conservation seed banks across the ASBP. Uh, many of these are substantial in size and uh, the collections can date back many decades. So this is an example of what the data portal looks like. Uh, we worked in partnership with the uh, ALA to develop a uh, user-friendly format that links the data from the seed bank with images, taxonomic data, occurrence data, 
uh, from other sources. Uh, you can see another example here, and, and the, the database is also incorporating plant trait data and uh, genomic data from, from other sources as well. So it's our hope that this portal will be useful for a range of stakeholders. We've got some listed here that we, we hope um, may be end users of the data. So other seed collectors, other researchers, government departments, um, et cetera. So that finishes my uh, introduction to the portal. I'm going to hand over in a minute to uh, one of the uh, portal developers. That's Jack Brinkman from the Atlas of Living Australia. Uh, and he's uh, going to show you in a little bit more detail how the portal works. Uh, but before I do, I just want to um, you know, really celebrate the last 20 years of the Australian Sea Bank partnership uh, and, and the fact that we're proud to be able to share um, some of our learnings through the Australian Virtual Sea Bank portal uh, and I'd like to take the opportunity to thank all of the ASBP partners. It's been a significant undertaking over the last couple of years to get this uh, portal refreshed and um, up and running and particularly acknowledge uh, Lydia Gear and Andrew Crawford who represented the ASBP uh, as project champions uh, and also need to thank our former uh, ASBP national coordinators so Damien Wrigley who uh, worked very hard to get this project up and running underway. And then Amelia Martin Jensen uh, took up the baton and uh, saw it through to completion. Uh, Brad Desmond as well continues to support us through the Secretariat. So thanks to all those people. Uh, and for those of you who would like to learn more about uh, the Australian Sea Bank Partnership and our projects, please do visit our website and social media channels. Um, so thank you very much. That's it for me just for the moment. I'll um, stop sharing my screen and we'll hand over to Jack from the Atlas of Living Australia to demonstrate the portal in a little more detail. Thank you. Awesome. Fantastic. Is everybody able to see my screen OK currently? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm going to take that as a yes yes we can fantastic awesome so <laughs> just had to double check you can never be a uh, too sure but um it's good to see a lot of um familiar names and a lot of new names lots of people here which is really great to see but um for those of you who don't know me I'm I am Jack Brinkman um I'm a software developer that developer for the Atlas of Living Australia and um I worked on the new iteration of the um Australian virtual seed bank um over the course of the essentially the past year. Um, and what I'll be doing, um, as David said, is I'll just be providing a, a brief run through um, of some example taxa of the portal, um, showing off different bits of uh, functionality, sort of how the portal works, looks. Um, and then if you have any questions, um, write them down and I'll be more than happy to answer them uh, at the end of this presentation. Um, but without further ado, I guess it's sort of logical to start on the home page, which provides a brief overview of the um, Australian Virtual Seed Bank and what it's about, about the partnership. Um, we can get started right away searching for a taxon, but if we scroll down a little bit more, we can firstly see um, the, the key data sets that we have in the system. Um, and these are the data sets that um, were very generously provided by the, the partners um, for the ASBP. Um, and sort of provide a, a nice geographical or geographically distributed range of um, seed data for the different partners across Australia. Um, if we scroll down a little bit more, we can see there's a, a handy contact uh, sort of button if you ever want to get in contact with the um, Australian Seed Partnership. Um, but I guess the best way to demonstrate the portal is to jump right in and give an example uh, taxa. So the first taxa we'll be looking at is the flannel flower. So we can use that um, search function on the um, home page. It auto completes with um, a bunch of species lists based on what you've typed in. So I guess I'll do that again for a, a better demonstration. But if we start typing in the um, taxon name, it will auto complete. And then we can select the taxon that we want from a list of options. We click on the option and then it will um, redirect us to the summary page. Um, now the summary summary page gives us two key bits of information. The first is um, 
uh, a map of the collection locations for the seeds. So this sort of shows how the seed is distributed across Australia um, based on the data that we have in our data sets. And then to the right, we actually have a, a breakdown of the, the classification of this uh, this taxa. So we can see that the um, kingdom's plantae, the phylum is um, Caro, Caro phyta, um, phyta, and it sort of breaks down and gets uh, to the genus level because, of course, this uh, we're looking at the uh, a genus for this example. Um, I will say that there are links to the um, actual uh, taxon ID um, supplied um, <clears throat> through biodiversity.org.au, which gives you a more detailed breakdown of um, the taxonomy. And then if we click on the different sort of hierarchies of the classification, we can actually move up and look at um, sort of a, a high level for, for this taxa or for that classification. Um, but starting off with, we will go to the accessions page um, and have a look at sort of the example data and what we can see. So these are essentially all of the accession records that we have in our database for the final flower. Um, and this initial table shows us um, sort of the key fields of the, the information that you may want to see first or what's uh, most important to the users. Um, so, for example, we can see the institution that we um, that is housing the accession, um, the specific taxon, because we're looking at this from a genus level, accession number, collection date, collection size. Um, so all of these key valuable fields. We can actually then go and click on the um, individual rows in the table. And then we um, are provided with an expanded view of um, a few more fields that may be um, useful um, to see for that accession record. So collection size, who collected it, um, herbar um, a herbarium voucher, if we do have one, 1,000 seed weight. Um, so lots of key fields here. So each of these fields, again, all these rows are expandable. We've also got a handy button up the top, which can go and expand all of the rows. And similarly, we can contract all the rows. Um, another nifty little feature to point out is we have definitions for all of the fields. So if there is any ambiguity, if you just hover over the field that you want to know more about, we can see that we have um, a definition for collection size and an example for collection size. So the total number of seeds that are currently available in the accession. Um, it's paginated. So of course, there's a few records here. We can change the amount of records that we want to see on the page. Um, and we can also filter the records that we see. So, for instance, if we're only interested in records from um, the Australian Plant Bank, we click the uh, filter button um, at the top, and then we're provided with this sort of query filter view, and we can sort of refine the data that we wish to see um, with our data set. So, for that example of the Australian Plant Bank, um, we will find that option here. We just click that, um, it updates the filter, and then we can see um, all of the data here that is just related to the Australian Plant Bank. If you want to get rid of a filter and you've had enough, you can just click the X button and filter will go away. And we've got um, the original sort of collection of data that we had. Um, so there are lots of different filters, or there are several different filters for different sort of elements. So seed per gram, thousand seed weight, or quantity in grams um, are all filterable as well as the uh, date collected. So if we're only interested in um, seed accessions that were collected, uh, let's say before the 1st of the 1st, 2022, we can enter in that filter. And then um, as you can see, all of the collections are updated to show um, collections prior to that date that have entered. One final key thing to note is that, of course, you'd, it's nice to see this data um, presented nice and visually, but if you want to download the data for research purposes, we have a uh, nifty download records button at the top right here. Um, it tells us the amount of records that we're downloading. In this is an instance, it's just 39, but we can click download. Um, it will then, of course, download the data, and I will quickly open it up on my other screen and drag this over. And then here we can see um, we've downloaded the, the data in a CSV format. Um, and yes, um, it's as simple as that. Click a button and you've got the uh, downloaded data for all of the um, accessions for this uh, taxa that we're looking at. Um, any queries or filters that you apply um, will also carry through with the data that you download in that instance. Um, very similar page, we've got the trials page. So again, it's it's modeled very closely after the accessions, accessions page, but still um, 
it provides us with data related to um, the trials for um, this particular taxon, in this case, case the flannel flower. Um, so we can click to expand the rows, similar to the accessions page, and we can see additional um, trial related fields. So number germinated, number tested, number full, not viable, um, all very useful, as well as when available, we have pretreatment data or um, trial conditions, which um, is very helpful contextual data um, if you're looking at germinating a particular uh, species. Um, if you want more information about an accession, um, if we navigate back to the accessions page, there's an all details button. Uh, if we click on this, it provides us with a fuller view of um, details for the accession. So um, all of the fields that we have available for the accession um, alongside a, a collection timeline. So when the seed was collected and if available, when the seed is in storage, um, as well as a, a collection map and the decimal longitude and latitude and state province. So um, location data, uh, related to this um, this taxa, and then we have um, a contact um, section. So if you want to get in contact, if you have any queries about the accession or um, trial data um, related to this, then the information is um, readily available there. And then we also have a link to um, the seed bank page for the seed bank that has supplied this record. So if we do click view seed bank, we can see that this record was provided by the Australian Plant Bank, um, and it gives a bit of a, a description about the data provider, the um, temporal span. So when what's the earliest record that we've received and what's the latest one, when the data was last updated, and um, a key uh, good one is the license. So what are your rights in terms of using the data um, as it was supplied to us? Um, we have another map on the seed bank summary page. So this, this map just shows all of the accessions or the, the collection locations for the accessions for the seed bank um, and how they're geographically distributed across Australia alongside a species list. So if we're, we want to check whether this seed bank has a specific species, we can um, type in the sidebar and we can confirm that yes, the uh, Australian plant bank has Acacia elata. So, Navigating back to the um, screen before, there are a few extra um, tabs that we can see for this uh, genus page. So um, one key one is media. So this is just a handy uh, quick glance at some of the um, representative images that we have for this taxa. We've sort of clearly delineated between um, verified specimen images that we have for the taxa and then more sort of representative images for the taxa that um, you may want to use if, for example, you're looking for that um, taxa in the field. Um, it is noted that the, the accuracy of these other images may vary. Um, so the, the key um, validated images will be at the top and then for the, um, the specimen images. So we can click on the images to see um, more information about them, look at the image metadata. So where it was supplied from, who it was taken by, um, the width, the height, the license that you can use, um, and the, the type of image. Um, so we can also view the original image, and that will open it up in a new tab and open up this very lovely big image for this taxon, which is can be very handy. Um, this is also filterable. So the images, we can search for a particular uh, image resource and a current state, or if um, a, a month for when the uh, image was supplied or taken. So if we switch it to March, we can see that these are all of the um, specimen images that were um, taken on March, which is a um, handy thing to have as well. If we um, navigate across and look at some of the other tabs, there's uh, two further tabs. The first one is the sequences tab. And although it is a tab, it is a little bit deceptive. Um, it actually just links to the uh, NCBI and provides some um, genomic data related to this taxon. So um, it will uh, essentially automatically search GenBank for you and navigate you to the um, GenBank page. So if you're looking for, again, genetic data for this um, taxon, that's where you'd find it. And then finally, we have traits. So this um, uses the Traits data that the ALA also uh, recently um, implemented in their BIE. So this just provides um, handy uh, yeah, trait data related to um, a genus or a taxon, so we can see that um, the flowering time, whether it's parasitic, any disperses, fire response, um, key sort of 
try data that um again it just provides helpful context when you're looking at data for a specific uh, taxon um if you need more context about what you're seeing on the pages each page has a little question mark which you can hover over and it will just tell you what you're um, what you're looking at um so if we for example go to the media page it has a little bit of a brief uh, description of what you're looking at and um, the data that's going to be shown on that page. There are also um, handy quick links. So if you want to see the ALA's um, uh, sort of view on this taxon or how what what data the ALA has in it in terms of the BIE, um, there is a, a quick link at the top header of the page um, and you can also copy the taxon ID. Um, that is a useful piece of information that you uh, wish to have on hand. Um, any more sort of if you're still stuck and you would like a, a guide through how to achieve certain things within the system, we have our help and our FAQ page. So um, this is sort of provides uh, two key um, important sort of bits of helper information. So one of them is um, sort of walkthroughs on how you would, for example, um, view accession data for a plant and it just provides you with a slideshow walkthrough of steps of this is what the system looks like this is how you would navigate through it um, with uh, text down below like explaining the different steps that you need to take and then for any frequently asked questions such as how do i access seeds um, what germination data is displayed um, etc we have um, a bunch of these common questions already answered um, in this section down below um, of course if you have any other questions, there is the um, Seed Bank Partnership email, which is info at seedpartnership.org.au, which is also linked um, very in various places throughout the portal, which you can use to get in contact with the um, Seed Bank Partnership. So in the interest of time, I will quickly run through uh, just two more quick examples. Um, one of them is for the tea tree, just to show the, the variety of the data that we have. So this is a species that was collected across various institutions. We can see that it's um, located within Victoria and Tasmania. We have a look at the accessions. These are some of the accessions that we have for the, um, the tea tree. Again, we can click to expand, see the collection size and collector in this instance, um, as well as when it was collected and the storage temperature. We have some trial data for this taxon as well. So, um, we can click through and view the uh, different bits of trial data, how many were germinated, um, how many were tested, and some of the um, trial conditions for this taxon. Um, similarly, we've got uh, media for this taxon. So um, some of, again, some of the herbarium specimens, um, which is useful to see, and sequences and trait data for this taxon as well. And um, I'll do one more example, just for the sake of breadth and just showing sort of the diversity of the data that we have in the, the portal, which is not that taxon, but um, one more taxon. Um, one key thing to note and one difference to note about this taxon is when a, a taxon has a conservation status, that will be flagged within the portal and you will see that on the summary page. So um, in this instance, this taxon is endangered in Victoria. Um, now there is a difference between sensitive and um, like taxon that are sent taxa that are flagged as sensitive and um, taxa that are part of uh, a conservation listing. So some may be listed on with a conservation status, but um, may not be listed as a sensitive species. So the data may still be in the portal. But um, we have um, made a, a fair effort. Um, and a solid effort so that any sensitive data or any sensitive taxa will have um, their locality data redacted in the portal so that um, we don't have anything leaking per se or any uh, sensitive information out there that um, shouldn't be publicly available. So I'll do another quick run through of some of the accession data that we have for uh, this taxon. Um, this one's an interesting one because it has a conservation listing, so this may be um, uh, useful for conservation researchers. Um, but again, we have a, a similar breadth of information um, that is available within the portal in terms of the accessions um, and the trials. So this in this case, again, we have collection size and um, the collector. You can view more details for this specific accession and we can see um, storage temperature, storage seed bank, form and storage, 
And again, we have a map showing the, um, the collection location for this um, seeding session. Um, I think that covers um, briefly sort of the broad key bits of functionality within the portal. Um, I will flag one final thing that um, we do have a light mode for the people who would love a light mode and um, um, it's good for accessibility. So um, good thing to flag and point out. Um, but apart from that, um, that is a, a brief overview of the uh, new Australian Virtual Seed Bank. Again, if you have any questions, um, feel free to write them down and I'd be happy to um, answer them at the end of this presentation. But I think now I will hand over back to David um, to talk a bit more about the the Australian Virtual Seed Bank. Yeah, th thanks very much, uh, Jack, for that that overview. Uh, I'm going to pass now to Rebecca Miller from the Royal Botanic Gardens in Victoria, and she's going to provide us with a few thoughts on how she might use the uh, database as a seed bank scientist. Thank you, Rebecca. No, just on mute. Fine. Yeah, <laughs> thank <Yep>. you. <laughs> I'll, I'll share a couple of slides in a moment, but hi everybody. Um, so my name is Beck Miller and I'm a research scientist in seed science at um, Royal Botanic Gardens, Victoria, uh, where we house the Victorian Conservation Seed Bank. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people of the Kulin Nation, so the traditional owners of the land from which I'm presenting today, and also where the Victorian Conservation Seed Bank is homed. Uh, on behalf of the RBGB and other seed bank partners, I've been asked to give a short reflection on what it means to have the virtual seed bank launched um, and our germination and data and other collections information publicly available in this way and um, what it means to me as a researcher as well. Um, in some ways, I feel I'm the least qualified member of RBGB's team to be speaking, having joined the gardens here three years ago, which is a relatively short contribution to a program that's been running since 2005. And many people have been involved over that 18 years. But in other ways that I've joined the team more recently um, means that I can see in full just how much work that has been, has been done by current and former colleagues. Um, volunteers and students. Um, and that's the work that I delve into on a daily basis and rely on in guiding my work. Um, in helping export and format and work through our data for this project, the scale and volume of the work done by so many um, became really clear. Um, and for me as a researcher, having germination data available across the partnership, capturing a wide array of species across um, the country and in different environments will be really invaluable for my research. Um, and I look forward to the opportunities for collaboration and engagement with other seed scientists, conservationists and land managers that I'm really confident the Virtual Seed Bank will encourage. I'll just uh, share my screen. Hopefully this comes up okay. So looking at some pretty pictures, has that come up? Um, so just a couple of pictorial slides that capture the importance of the team of people involved in the activities that we do and the work behind the scenes to obtain the data that is now available for you all. Um, so while these images ref reflect a snapshot of the work done here at the Victorian Conservation Seed Bank, I know it would be uh, it would similarly reflect the range of contributions made by staff and volunteers at our other partners. The first slide captures the work done to collect seeds for banking and the diverse range of challenges that our landscapes, um, rare species in particular, present. Um, they often have very restricted geographic ranges. In the case of RBGV, Neville Walsh, Jeff Jeans, Andre Messina and Meg Hurst, all represented here, have led much of the collecting work, supported by science and horticulture staff and many volunteers. Whether it be rafting the Snowy River, the six days after the 2019-2020 bushfires as shown here, or scaling cliffs to assess bushfire impacts and collect seed from species endemic to the Snowy River, wading into wetlands, or using a dust buster or tweezers on the Bogong High Plains, as Neville and Danny show, to collect seeds from a really diminutive and critically endangered shrublet in years, whether it's either been fruiting abundantly or very little at all. As a result of all this work, we now have seed collections representing just over 40% of Victoria's native flora. Um, I did a recent, recent approximate tally of seeds collected and banked for conservation here, and it came to almost 37,400,000 seeds to give you some context scale. Uh, of course, it's not gonna progress, hold on a second. Um, 
So back at the herbarium at RBGV is where the cleaning, counting, viability and germination testing is done. The data is now captured and available via the virtual seed bank for everyone. Um, we've done about 16,000 different germination trials over the journey for research and for the seed bank. And to date, about 2,000 of them have been made available by the virtual seed bank. Um, and we look forward to getting more of that data available to people in future. All of this work um, has been achieved with and relied on the support of donor funding. And staff have often been employed one or two days a week for the work on the seed bank to fit in amongst other tasks. One of the key people um, represented here is a volunteer, Bob Hare, who's been volunteering with us for 15 years and is a much treasured member of our team and points to the importance of those volunteer contributions across the partnership. Um, the dedication of staff and volunteers reflects that sheer commitment to conservation, both the long-term storage of seeds, but also the work required to ensure that we can use our collections for many native species, as Dave has talked about, they have complex dormancies and this requires us to work through and crack that puzzle, working out the treatments and conditions required to stimulate germination so that our collections can be used for activities, including seed orcharding or the growing of plants for research, for restoration and translocations. And as one of the images on the right captures, working with our horticulture and nursery staff is a critical part of that and a really satisfying part of that process. Um, so to finish, just a reflection, one of the questions we are most asked most frequently as seed bank staff is whether or not our results and our germination data are publicly available. And it's so wonderful to now be able to point people to the virtual seed bank for this work. And it is fantastic for us to be able to proudly share the work that we've been doing over a number of years. And I think through sharing that data um, will bring greater value to the conservation and research work of members of the Seed Bank Partnership. So I'd like to end by just thanking the Australian Seed Bank Partnership, all the other partners and members and the ALA team for all their efforts in bringing this together. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Rebecca, for those uh, thoughts. So uh, <clears throat> there's uh, doesn't look like there's any questions in, in the Q&A, so we, uh, that, that, that concludes our launch of the Australian Virtual Seed Bank. We hope that today's uh, presentations have given you an overview of uh, the portal and how it functions, and uh, we hope that you find it useful. This, this video will be made available on the Australian Seed Bank Partnerships uh, YouTube channel, so you can go back and uh, view it, um, probably particularly Jack's demonstration of how the portal works uh, and uh, I would also uh, just em emphasize that the Australian Seed Bank partnership is going to continue uh, working on the uh, the data so the extent uh, and quality of the data that's provided there's going to be annual updates uh, to the Australian virtual seed bank so uh, we'll just can continue working and in improving it uh, but in the meantime thanks very much for uh, joining us today and uh, enjoy using the database. Could I really quickly yeah. flag? I, I did see some questions in the chat that I could answer, um, just not oh, in the Q&A okay. section. Oh, okay. That was such a good, fantastic good outro, though. Okay. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Right I can do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess I can I'll quickly answer one part of a question um, that was asked for me. Or if I can find it again. Well, um, one of the questions was, um, are we using what are we using for the taxonomic backbone? Um, and we're using the um, the ALA's name matching service and the ALA's taxonomic backbone um, to handle taxonomy for this project. Um, so that's one that I can answer quickly. And then um, another quick question for me is: It does it work in the field, um, phone app, or only via computer? So it is um, a website. Technically, you could access it on your phone um, on the in the field. It is optimized for desktop. Uh, computers, um, so it's it's it is not mobile optimized. It does work on mobile though. Um, so yes, you. Short answer is yes. You could use it on the field, but it's preferred that you use it on a desktop um, because that's what it was designed for. I think that's. It's another question there, Jack, as well about whether yeah. SEM images or X-rays um, of seeds will be included, not just the specimens in the herbaria. 
Okay. Um, currently, no. Currently, we just have the um, the specimen images and then other related images because um, they are two key types of images that we can um, currently uh, query and filter on within the ALA. Um, but that's being said, there's nothing stopping stuff like that um, being from implemented in the future. We do have a backlog and we do have a, a, a scheduled maintenance sprint where we can um, sort of keep the portal up to date and working well and potentially implement new um, new requirements in the future. So. Okay, we found all the questions. Thanks for picking those up, Jack. Good. And Tan um, oh, yep. Sorry. Yep. Just add, yes, Tanya does raise a good point that if they are mm -hmm. um, linked in the um, ALA image library, they can, there is a potential that they can appear as supplemental images in the other section. Um, but there's no clear delineation. We won't have like a new section for it. Um, so oh, seed weight calculation. Um, do you have a calculation for the um, number of seeds by species weight? Uh, certainly. Um, that's a tricky question. <laughs> um, do we have a calculation for number of seeds by species weight? Um, so, so the I mean the the seed weight data I can't actually see that question, but the the seed weight data that will be in the portal will predominantly it, it potentially in in different forms, but it, it could be um, you know weight of a single seed, or it could be um, weight of um, a the fine number of seeds, so thousand seed weight um, could be seeds per gram. Um, so uh, you, you just need to um, have a have a look at it in the in the portal and, and I think the other point to note is you can also um, contact the seed banks uh, directly through the portal if you want to know um, additional information about particular species. Definitely. I will I will also flag that we don't actually do any calculations within the data that's sort of supplied to the portal. It's we take the data as is that um sort of fill the schema in the fields that we've defined, and then that's what's shown in the portal. So it is, um, yeah, as David said, uh, you would contact the seed bank because it is very um, seed bank specific in that regard. Can we download aggregated data on the trials for each species? Um, yes. So. Um, yes, if we, oh, I don't, I'm not showing my screen, but, um, well, I guess, yes, the short answer is yes. If we, um, if you navigate to the trials page and click the, the download button, essentially for that trials tab, that will download all of the, um, the trial data that we have for that, uh, taxon or for that classification. So you can also download not only at a species level, but at a genus level or, um, at higher classifications. Okay, so I think I think now we've covered all the questions. Apologies for uh, not not picking those up before, but um, thanks again. Uh, and uh, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up now. But um, we hope you enjoyed uh, today's presentation, and feel free to use the database and contact us if uh, you have any questions. Um, so we'll uh, conclude for now and uh, see you online.